The gentle art of fencing, as practiced today, is a relic of the roaring days when it was used as a means of offense or defense, hence its name. These fencers are not rehearsing a dual role, but are preparing as members of the American Olympic fencing team for the international games. Originally, the foil was a practice weapon, used for the business of going through the motions of spitting the gizzard of an enemy, to the frenzied shouts of odds bodikins and gadzooks. But dueling being a little unpopular, and a little painful too, and with swordsmanship today only a harmless sport, the foil has come to be adopted as one of the three standard weapons in fencing contests. Here, an expert is instructing a team member in the use of the epe, or rapier, the second of these weapons, which is limited to thrusting. The target, if you please, is any part of the body, from the feet to the head, a survival of the days when it was used to defend or take life. The third weapon, the saber, has a keen edge and is used for cutting as well as thrusting. Have at thee for a scurvy knave. A former foils champion is having a lesson in this, the most spectacular of all weapons. Slow motion of the same pair in actual combat with a sabre shows the skill and lightning speed necessary to achieve championship form in this exciting sport. As in most other sports, footwork is very important. The swordsman must be in a position at all times to extend himself far enough in lunging or cutting to reach his opponent and to be able to retire instantly if necessary without losing his balance or getting off guard. While generally speaking, dueling has become a thing of the past, it doesn't seem so very long ago that a man's expectancy of life, as the assurance companies say, largely depended on his ability to defend himself with these weapons. And a knowledge of swordsmanship was as essential to the perfect CAD as the old school tie is today. <laughs>